you've been following me for some time now, you'll notice that I cover a lot of ARGs and web series. Many of them range in quality from having the appearance of being done amateurly to displaying immense amounts of work at a theatrical level. Probably one of the most cinematic and well-assembled ARGs that I had covered in recent months might have to have been 2H32. However, I'd like to digress on that statement and be one to state that this channel that I'm about to walk you through does an absolutely masterful job of portraying their themes and motifs through an incredibly stunning standard of quality. Enter Abstractions, a channel that takes cinematics to a whole new level by utilizing a dimension that seems to be absent from nearly every other series that I've covered. I'll get to what I mean by that shortly, however to begin, I'd like to recommend one thing to you. Nightmind had discussed the first few videos from Abstractions a few months ago, and he made some incredible points to note when taking an investigative look at this channel. If you haven't seen it yet, I'll leave a link in the description for you to head over and check it out. However, note that I'll be giving a summary of his video, and taking this explanation all the way to the most recent upload on their channel, so if you don't end up heading over to check his introductory analysis out, don't worry. I'll do the best I can to catch you up to speed. In Nightmind's analysis, he began by walking us through the first video. In this, we can observe what appears to be a bridge with distortions happening all around and random strings of text appearing at different timestamps. While these messages don't initially appear to make any definitive sense, he informed us that there are indeed captions to pay attention to. Once activated, we gain another level of narrative that, when coupled with the on-screen quotes, forms a message stating this. It could be so easy. It's all around you. Water or bridge. Stop waiting. Start moving. Falling. To climb again. To fall again. Your patience will be rewarded. The video then ends with the code, to which Nick determines is an RGB coordinate for a color in between red and absolute magenta. Nick takes this observation and hypothesizes that this could ultimately be representative of our main protagonist as they're stuck in between two polar extremes in their life and are on a conflicted path to make a change. This is entirely significant in the remainder of the series, so remember this idea. With these messages comes visuals that seem to add a level of first person dimension to what we're watching. The video appeared to be a narrative of the person filming as he traverses through a conflicting state of mind. We don't know exactly what it is that caused this mindset, and thus this sets us off on the trek to figure out what exactly this channel was trying to convey. Fast forward in his analysis to the segment covering the video, Study 1, Encapsulate, and we are greeted with the footage of a house in shambles. The person filming proceeds through to a room with a silhouette of a hooded woman with text that pops up on screen that reads, If she were like you, would you watch? Would you stare? Would you care? with code hovering above each string of text. He determined that this code was a video ID to an unlisted upload that had a description reading, The Devil is in the Details, which leads us to determine the fact that we might want to watch and listen closely. Before we do, however, we notice that in the title of the video exists a range of numbers, 110 to 121, which Nick then determined are actual frames of the video to watch out for. Once we watch the frames from 110 to 121, we notice a shadowy figure in the back room, off to the side. There were a few other smaller points that he covered, however this was the bulk of the notable theories in his video, in which I will say was masterfully done. Now, I'd like to take it upon myself to pick up where he left off and not only present to you key observations as we move forward, but rather the entire story behind this series and how it all ties together. To begin, I'll kick this off with the video titled, Septic. This video is significant in some of the theories that Nick presented, and wholly supports his ideas. Take a look at it before I explain it. Now, what we see appears to be a simple bathtub that's filling up with bubbles. The camera transitions seem to signify blinking, which adds a special level of envelopment into this story, seemingly placing us in the position of the person filming. Backing up and taking a look at the tags reveals this. Abstractions. 
septic, and one notable one, conjoined spectrum. If you can recall, towards the middle of the video, we see the bath bubbles merging together and becoming connected, which ties into the tag conjoined spectrum. Now, what exactly is conjoining a spectrum? We know that to conjoin means to essentially combine or make whole. However, what's the significance of the word spectrum? Spectrum. What's something that we think of when we hear the word spectrum? Ah, that's it. Color. The color spectrum. The entire premise of this video is the idea that the spectrum of color is conjoining. Since the color that we found from the RGB codes from the initial video is between red and magenta, this is significant in the theory that our protagonist is making a change to one polar side of that spectrum. Red and magenta, however, what exactly do these mean and which one represents positivity? What about negativity? Let's move forward. The next video, Fixate, opens by displaying a distorted shot of a tree on a cliff followed by close-up shots inside of a hospital. We can see the floor, the ceiling, signs, and various other zoomed-in shots of various items inside of that room. The video closes with a nighttime shot of the room window with the message that reads, Fixate. Now, wait a minute, back up for a second and think about it. We have a character who seems to be in conflicting states of mind, possibly being watched by a hooded woman, and it's safe to assume that our protagonist is trying to make some significant change in their life. And now suddenly, we have shots inside of a hospital room right after seeing a shot of a cliff? Fixate, by definition, means to gather an obsession with something, and looking at the description provides us with some clues. It reads, We have to remind ourselves, or force ourselves, to stay inside which entirely follows the premise of this video, which is our character anxiously staying inside of this hospital room. Now, what exactly is it that's keeping him confined in this room? What is the conflict that our protagonist is enduring, and why is it leading him to act in this manner of insanity? Going on a tangent here, we might recall that we never actually knew what it was that was bothering the person filming. Was it just how they lived their entire life? Or did something happen that caused this? Taking a look at the next video, Repose, presents us with a vital clue. Take a look. Repose, by definition, means to be lying, situated, and kept in a particular place. However, it also means to be in a state of rest, sleep, or tranquility. This just might have to be the perfect word to explain this video, as it follows both definitions concurrently, and I'll explain why. As we could see, the video appeared to display somewhat of a utopian nature, interrupted by glitches of some sort. However, I'd like to state that I believe that the most important portion of this video lies at the very end. At the one minute mark, the video switches to what looks like what we see when we're sleeping but are actually awake. Light seems to be shining on our character's eyes, possibly having awoken him from this dreamlike state. At one minute and four seconds, however, we notice something vital. Braids on the back of a woman's head, and then a cliff once more. This does it. Have you made the connection yet? Our character is reposed in a hospital room, unable to leave, 
as he lies in a state of conflicted and interrupted repose, dreaming of a utopian lifestyle that could have been representative of his past. In his semi-sleep state, we see a woman. This isn't the first time we've seen a female character either. Backing up into Nightmind's analysis, in the study series of Abstractions videos, we see a hooded woman who is unable to directly communicate with us. She's eerie for sure, but seemingly poses no direct threat. So why? Putting the puzzle pieces together thus far, we can be led to assume that this woman is his loved one. It isn't our guy admitted into the hospital and physically unable to leave, but rather an assumed relative or spouse whom is going through something very, very serious, requiring our main protagonist to stay by her side, reflect on his old life, and go through severe mental trauma along the way. Let's press on. I want to jump forward to the video, Anemia. Anemia, by definition, is a medical condition that results in low red blood cell count in the body. This is primarily caused by lack of iron in one's blood, and could come from a variety of factors such as diet or inheritance. Take a look at this entry. Now, as we can see, our character appears to be in a dreamlike state of repose once more, with the ending becoming quite interesting. The formation that we see in the distance glitches into a body bag, however I want to run this by you once again. Do you see it? Here, let me show you a screen cap. See it now? At 9 seconds exactly, the screen glitches and a message reading, Paroxysm, appears in the bottom left corner. Googling the definition of this presents us with this. Paroxysm, a sudden recurrence or attack of a disease or a sudden worsening of symptoms. This was masterfully placed and ties into our theory quite nicely. It seems that we might finally know what our protagonist's loved one is diagnosed with. It's anemia, and it's progressively getting worse. Moving forward to the video titled Refractory, we can see yet another dreamlike shot with a profile of an ominous figure at the very end. I want to step aside and make one quick point here though regarding the use of the term refractory and why it's significant. Refractory in medical terms refers to a condition that's difficult to treat or cure. If we put the pieces together from before, we can hypothesize that our character's loved one has refractory anemia, which is essentially a condition that does not respond to treatment. A corollary to this could be that she's dying, possibly due to a serious and potentially fatal decision that she may have made at this scene that we keep seeing. A cliff. Did she jump off this cliff, or did our protagonist do something demented to her here, making this entire situation more ominous? Let's press on and find out. Jumping forward to the video titled, Not Abandoned, presents us with some more key points. Take a look at a portion of it. You know the suffering you went through, but you also know that you had courage. Courage to make that journey. Celebrating a birthday in the midst of illness, especially if is not a pleasant thing, but I'm sure your presence was the most important thing on your birthday, your comfort and your care. But as you tell me today, someone so young, someone that you would hope and plan for many more years with, it's so hard. As we could hear, there was a voiceover and some distinct hesitation during it. The voice is pretty hard to make out, and this could represent the dialogue that the group off to the right is discussing. Try to take a listen when I add captions to the part that I was able to make out. You know the suffering you went through, but you also know that you had courage. Courage to make that journey. Celebrating a birthday in the midst of illness, especially if is not a pleasant thing, but I'm sure your presence was the most important thing your comfort and your care. But as you tell me today, someone so young, someone that you would hope and plan for many more years with, it's so hard. And my heart and my prayers are with you. 
but be strong and know that you did not abandon all that to one by death. You are not abandoned by our God as well. Amen. This right here throws us for a slight loop. We made the key point that our protagonist was distraught and going crazy over something. Then we determined that it was over a loved one. We then theorized that the condition they had was refractory anemia. And now we're presented with a shot of a funeral procession with quotes referencing someone so young. Someone so young. Is this actually a spouse? Or could it be a daughter? Also, what's the significance of the funeral procession itself? Did they end up passing away? Let's move on and find out. For the next video, I want to make a quick point. It's titled B29. Take a look. Now, referencing back to our previous hypothesis of the protagonist's loved one being dead, if we put two and two together, we can safely assume that they have indeed passed away. Our character is traversing through a graveyard very late at night, all while stricken with grief as they search for the plot of where they're buried. Where's that plot, you ask? Well, most cemeteries notate their plot locations with a letter indicating the row, followed by a number representing a column. It's all laid out in a grid, and if the title of this one is anything to go by, we can assume that they're buried in Cemetery Plot B29. The next two videos that I want to touch on are Servile and El Ivris. Clearly, these two titles are mirrors of each other, and looking each title up led me to the definition of Servile. Servile means to show an excessive willingness to serve or please others. The two videos are connected in the sense that they are the exact same, minus a small detail in Alivres. Take a look at Servile. Now, what I gathered from this is that the protagonist is struggling to live their daily life as they're stricken with the grief of the loss they've suffered. Their mind keeps referencing back to the image of the cemetery since they know that's where their loved one rests. They can't grasp reality any longer, and so the description of the video, being here, being there, being nowhere, seems to tie into this perfectly. They're living in a complete haze and are just going through the motions, seemingly not caring what anyone around them does or wants to do. They're pleasing everyone by simply going through the motions of what everyone else is doing. Taking a look at El Ivres showed me one key aspect that was missing. I'll play the portion of Servile and then El Ivres right after and let you spot the difference. Take a look. It seems that the chime noise is absent in El Ivres, and I was personally led to assume that it's some sort of Morse code. 
Looking up the code, I was led to the letter X. This stuck out to me in many ways. Before I dive into why, I want to show you the description. In Elivres, it reads, If it's been left out, it must be unimportant. Now, hear me out. Typically, especially when we were younger, we were taught that when looking for buried treasure, or anything buried for that matter, what marks the spot? X. The letter X has always been symbolic of the location of something in the subsurface of the earth. Now, why would it be unimportant? We can tie this X reference to where the loved one is buried, so why would he be trying to discount its significance? Is this really coming from him, or is he potentially relaying what everyone around him is convincing him is true? When someone passes away, there's always a motive to stay positive and move forward with life since we know that they're now in a better place, and generally, over time, the sting of losing a loved one fades very slowly as we carry on with the daily struggles, tasks, and conventions of life. This could potentially be a method of coping for our protagonist, or maybe they're being convinced that they're coping and moving on, even though they actually aren't. This is my personal take on these two uploads, and I will say, it was done very, very well. Moving on to the most recent upload, non-coding, we are met with many references to degeneration. Take a look. Any really well-informed population geneticist understands that man is degenerating. Because of the nature of this degenerative process in our own body, there is no prospect for any type of scientific breakthrough to significantly extend our lifespan beyond what it is. Now, this is a home run. He's not coping, and in fact, he can't stop researching and listening to scientific opinions and research over the topic of human longevity. In the tags, we see the term degeneration, just like is mentioned in the video, and by definition, this essentially means to be in a state of decline. The degenerative process that was referenced in the video is something that's entirely inevitable. We are all going to pass away someday. However, our guy was simply dealt a bad hand, with his loved one degenerating at a much higher rate than the rest of us. He's distraught, he's going insane, and he can't seem to get over this terrible and unfortunate loss. Now, we have all the puzzle pieces in place, and you know what I believe this channel is trying to convey. We had the opening, with our character going through a severe mental episode, contemplating making a major decision in his life. The hooded woman is seemingly his loved one, and the tough decision that he was initially faced with could have been whether to pull the plug on her life or not. The loved one's condition progressed to a point of no return, resulting in her untimely death as our protagonist was already in agony by her side the entire way. As she was ripped away from him, he spiraled into denial and down a rabbit hole of complete haze, not being able to distinguish reality from memory any longer. As he progresses into coping with her loss over time, he's seemingly being convinced that he needs to move on, and he takes this advice in the manner that he needs to discount her death and make it seem insignificant. However, in the end, we can see that this was most definitely not the case, as he's continually researching human longevity after all of this time. One last point is that the timeline of this entire channel takes place over the span of months with weeks being in between uploads. This series is masterful, and I simply cannot get over the themes, cinematography, and the manner of storytelling. Never before have I been so encapsulated and enveloped into a web series like this, and I wholeheartedly encourage you to go over to their channel and form your own theories as to what's going on. It's sad. It's interesting. It's confusing, it's compelling, but most of all, it's extremely, extremely well done. Abstractions is a tragic series that I simply cannot wait to see more content from, and when I do, you can bet that I'll be there to see it. I wanted to sincerely thank all of you for watching my explanation of Abstractions. I hope you all enjoyed this, and I also wanted to welcome all of my newest supporters. You have just jumped on a train that's heading to some serious heights, as I have some massive things planned for you all. Anyway, keep throwing me recommendations as always, and I'll be sure to check them out. Thanks once again for watching, I love you all, and as always, good night.